Today we bring you in to chapter three of a six chapter story as we make our way around Heaven's Golf Course, holes seven through nine, at a place that greatly resembles that golf course in Augusta, Georgia, straight ahead. Hello friends, Bill Hobson here inside the MGL Sim Studio where we are now in day three of our really fun series playing a course very similar to Augusta National, but not Augusta National, in case you're with the copyright police. Today, we round out the front nine holes, seven, eight, and nine, Pampas, Yellow Jasmine, and Carolina Cherry as we get nearer and nearer to the holes that everybody knows so well. Now, if you're just joining us in the prior two videos, I managed to come out of those first six holes at even par after a kind of a surprising birdie on number five, Magnolia, which is a really long par, five, par four. So now we step up to number seven, playing just three and a quarter, bunkers right in front. This is all about the, the placement of your approach shot and of course, keeping your drive between the, the uprights there in a fairly narrow fairway. We are gonna hit driver again because we mostly, we mostly do that, try to get this to about a 80 yard second shot if we can. A little bit of a fade, but it should end up between the uprights. I think we'll be in good shape there. Glad for that. Leaves us with 77 yards. Now it's uphill quite a bit. Now this is one of those that I think is really hard to, to gauge, hard to know how to hit this. Um, we can take a look up there on the green with our heat map and see that this whole location near the blue is in the lowest part. And if we look at a map that takes us up there, you kind of get a feel for how much room you have around the edges. And um, you got to be fairly precise. Might be able to go behind the hole a little bit and have it come back, but short, definitely no good. So I've grabbed a, a 52 degree wedge because this is going to play somewhere in that 83 to 85 yard range. Let's see what we can do with it here. Now that felt pretty good. Let's see if I guessed right. Get down. Oh no, not the bunker. Oh my God. I uh, did not anticipate having this shot for my third. Wow. It is hard to gauge distances in the simulator world, and I miscalculated. So now, we've got a 13-yard shot. It's just downhill a little bit. And if you can see by the white dots on either side, it sort of seems to be sitting in a little bit of a, of a valley. So maybe we can get this close. Get up and down, save our par. 13 yards away. Oh, I just shanked it. Oh no, I'm gonna need some help here. Oh, I might get away with it because that was a clunker. Oh man, thank goodness I didn't swing very hard, which is probably the reason that I hit the clunker. Little decel there. And now look at the par putt. It's only six feet, but it is screaming from left to right because some dummy <laughs> hit that bunker shot on the side of the slope. I'm actually fortunate it didn't go all the way down. You can see to the right of the flag, one, two, three spots, three grid lines, it falls right off. You can see the white dots just shooting down there. So let's, uh, let's make this and save our par. I'd hate to give one up here, six feet away. Maybe, oh, it curled in, it curled in. I will take that. All right, now we come to number eight, the par five that you all know so well. And we've got to hit a good tee shot here. By the way, just a quick word here. I've been asked a number of times already in this series what it is I'm using for a tee here in the simulator studio uh, because this great setup that comes from our partners at the indoor golf shop came with this hitting strip, which is called the SIG Pro Softy, widely regarded as the best hitting strip in the simulator business. And it can take a regular tee. 
you can stick the tea that you use on grass in here. But what, what I found uh, over the course of the first couple weeks is that putting a regular tea in here meant two things. One, I was always having to chase down the tea because it was going anywhere. And number two, it was coming out of there like a missile. And if you're sitting back here, somebody else is in here playing with me, you, you almost needed safety goggles on. So thankfully, I came into contact with a very inventive gentleman from K2 Golf. K2 Golf. And basically, these are tethered rubber tees. They're tethered with bungee. And they don't, you know, they're not going to get away from you. They're not going to put an eye out like Christmas Story. Absolutely love this. Highly recommend if you're in the simulator world and you're tired of chasing tees all over creation, look up K2 Golf. And the tees come in like seven different heights. Everything from basically flat on the ground to a little higher than I'm comfortable using in here because you don't want anybody to sky one into the ceiling. So just a little insight for you. Meanwhile, let's take a flight down number eight and see what we're getting into here. I don't know why it's flying us through the trees. We don't have to hit it through the trees. It's a beautiful par five. It's, it's uphill the entire way. And that third shot goes way back to the left. And this is the one where you often see guys hit their second shots up on those mounds to the right, and it feeds onto the green. But this, this hole will demand a whole lot of your attention. I'm playing it at 484. It's 23 yards uphill. And if you've ever been to Augusta National to walk it, you know that this course, which is very similar to Augusta National, has a lot of undulation and elevation to it. All right, it's going to drive in the fairway and see what we can do from there. Got a little bit more cut on that one than I really wanted to, but I think, all right, I'm not in a bunker. <laughs> That's a treat. I've been in a few bunkers so far today. Okay, 244 left. So I will take out a three wood. I know I can't get there, and I don't want to go right at that, uh, that hole because I don't want to hit it into the tree. So I'm going to move my line up over here a bit. See if we can get one up the hill. We're still going uphill pretty dramatically. So don't have to kill this one. Just want to get it up there to set up a nice easy pitch for my third. I pulled it into the trees exactly what I didn't want to do. Cut through there. All right, I got lucky. I'm no longer lucky. Oh, stop. Stop, stop, stop. Wait till you see the look on this next shot. Because this, now, you can't even see the flag. It's completely hidden behind that ridge. Um, we'll take out our 58, but let's take a look at the, uh, at the target so that we can get a feel for where everything is, where it's all going. Right over there. It's in the low spot. Oh, sorry, it's in the high spot, 39 yards away, and I've got to guess, basically, how much carry I want to put on it over top of that mound. This is the result of a very poor second shot. Now we've got to do some scrambling. 39 yards. Yeah, let's see. Sit, 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 sit. Sit, sit, sit. Okay, we can live with that. We can live with that. Okay, a little birdie putt here on eight. Eight feet, eight inches, a little bit left to right. Tad bit uphill. Would love to make this one. I guess that goes without saying. When wouldn't you love to make a putt? Sit. Yeah, I thought so. Left it out there in the corner. That is a bad miss right there, friends. Unfortunate. All right, next we come to number nine, the famous ninth hole. Let's take a look at it. You know, this goes down the hill and then turns hard left for a severe uphill second shot. And the key, of course, is to get it around that corner so that for your second shot you've got a clean look at the green. All right, this would call for a little bit of a draw, 
not my strong suit, as you may have noticed. If you've watched these videos for a few days, I don't think I've hit a draw yet. So ideally, I will hit it at that white scoreboard that we see right down the left side of the fairway. Oh, I might have hit a little draw there. Let's see if it gets past that corner. Going to need it to get through there. Good. All right, not my best contact of the day, but I think we're gonna get away with it. Plus it runs out quite a bit. Wait till you see how uphill the second shot is here. Okay, 121, nine yards up. Let's take a look at the target up here. We know this about number nine. Anything short coming back down the hill, we've seen it before. Anything long is gonna make for a nearly impossible chip. So we've really gotta be precise on our distance here, 121, nine yards uphill. So we're gonna to try to get this one about 127-ish, which is a pretty full pitching wedge for yours truly. Oh, be good, be good, be good. Give me that bounce and stay right there. Stay. Pleased with that. How fun would it be to run home a birdie here on nine before we get to the, to the back nine? Okay, we're going left to right again. I've had this a few times, although these are really moving. So we're eight feet, hard turn left to right down that hill. We're going to give this about to the left edge of that little two-foot gimme circle and see if that's the right break. Nope. Knew it as soon as I hit it. And now this is no gimme coming back because I've got the right to left version of that putt three feet away. Oh, you're kidding me. Well, I said it, no gimme, no easy putt. And there we go. And of course I just moved outside the circle. So we'll hopefully tap this one in. That, my friends, is a disappointing bogey to round out this three-hole set, playing so well. But that's what happens at the course that resembles Augusta. There is something to get you pretty much everywhere you turn. Even after you hit a couple of good shots, you get to the greens and your, your work is not nearly done. We'll see you next time as we head to the back nine, 10, 11, and 12 up next.